basics. A lot of theories in geophysics make use of vectors, so let's start by understanding what a vector is. Here we have a basic Cartesian coordinate system. It has three axis directions, x, y, and z. We say it's a right-handed coordinate system because if you take your right hand and put your fingers down the x-axis and curl them towards the y-axis, your thumb points in the direction of the z-axis. In this coordinate system, we can define a position vector, say to a point here, uh, as a vector that points from the origin to that point. I'll call that vector A. I put an arrow on top to indicate that it's a vector. That vector has three scalar components. If I take the projection of that point down onto the xy plane here, and then project that point back to the x-axis parallel to the y-axis, and then back to the y-axis parallel to the z-axis, I can get the x and y components of a. So I call those ax and ay. In the same way, if I project that point over to the xz plane, and then project it across parallel to the x-axis, to the z-axis, I get the z component. You can call that az. If I complete that box by projecting over to the yz plane here, and then from the yz plane back to the z-axis, or from the xz plane down to the x-axis, you see that makes a rectangular prism. So we call this a rectangular coordinate system. So the Cartesian coordinate system consists of three components in three dimensions, uh, each of which being a scalar. To express that vector algebraically, there are a few different approaches to doing that. One way is using the unit vector approach, which is what we'll use through this section. So if we imagine that parallel to each of the primary coordinate directions, x, y, and z, we have unit vectors, which we'll call i, j, and k. We can use those to express the components of this vector. So i is a vector which we'll write as 1, 0, 0, j is 0, 1, 0, and k is 0, 0, 1. So those are our three basic unit vectors. Now we can express the vector a algebraically as a sum of those three vectors, a weighted sum. So the vector a is equal to, we're going to have the three components, ax, ay, and az. I'm going to take a weighted sum of those components, multiplied by the unit vectors, i, j, and k. So that's how we write out a vector algebraically. Another way we can write that vector is by expressing it as a magnitude multiplied by a unit vector. So a vector is an object that has a magnitude and a direction. And we get the magnitude of A from the Euclidean distance formula. So square root of AX, AY, AZ, each squared. So I'm taking the sum of the squares of the components and then the square root of the whole thing, and that gives me the magnitude of the vector. The unit vector pointing in the direction of A, I can write as the magnitude of A over, sorry, J 
should be the vector a over the magnitude of a. So in that way, we've separated out the magnitude and the direction of the vector. Another way of writing the direction vector, this unit direction vector, is through the direction cosines. So if I take my vector a and look at the angle between a and the x-axis, call it theta x, the angle between a and the y-axis, call it theta y, and then the angle between a and the z-axis, call it theta z, I can write out this unit vector here as cosine theta x times i plus cosine theta y times j plus cosine theta z times k. So sometimes you might hear the components of the unit vector referred to as the direction cosines. So those just basically tell us the direction of the unit vector of A. So that's a basic introduction to how we express a vector algebraically, and we'll continue with some more simple operations on vectors in the next video.